Hey everybody, it's Dr. Eric Paul Cabbage. We're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday, and today we're doing another lab review. So this is um, a client that came to my office recently, and I want to talk about some labs and maybe some of the decisions that were made, maybe why they were made, um, that then created a bigger thyroid problem. So this is a person who's who at the time they're not feeling good, they're not, they've got a lot of stress going on in their life, um, they're tired, they're fatigued, and they're just overloaded with stress. Now, they're tired, they're fatigued, and they don't feel well, they're gaining weight, and the issue becomes, is it a thyroid problem? And the person ran sex hormones, they had thyroid panel run, and the person, this person was diagnosed with hypothyroidism based on these labs by a more functional practitioner, a naturopathic practitioner. So uh, TSH is 0.61. Total T4 and total T3 were not done. Free T4 is 1.0. Free T3 is 2.4. Uh, no antibodies, no reverse T3, and the free T3 to free T4 ratio is 0.29, which is just below the, consider what the, an optimal range would be, 0.31 to 0.34. So this is on no medications. Based on these labs, the person was, and their symptoms, the person was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and put on thyroid medication. Now, how do we justify that? Well, I don't think you can justify it. I understand the person's not feeling well, they're tired, they're fatigued, they have symptoms that I guess we could consider would be hypothyroid type symptoms, but is providing thyroid medication an appropriate strategy here? Now, I, I would tell you no. So I don't think there was ill intent on the provider. Uh, we see the type of patients maybe feels uh, hypothyroid. Maybe they look hypothyroid at the time. I don't know for certain. But based on these labs, should this person have put on, been put on thyroid medication? I don't believe so. So why? Well, TSH is 0.61. So what that tells us something. This is a person who's not on medication. Their TSH is 0.61. So there is likely an inflammatory process going on. When TSH is suppressed at 0.61, there's an inflammatory process going on. When there's a stressed, self-stress inflammatory process going on, TSH being at 0.61, there is likely a reduced production of T4 and T3 at the thyroid gland. That would happen. So if TSH is suppressed, there's less drive at the thyroid gland to increase thyroid hormone production. But is giving more thyroid hormone in that situation the right answer? And I would say, argue the answer is no. The issue is what's driving the inflammatory process that's increasing the conversion of T4 to T3 at the hypothalamus, dropping TSH levels. That's what we really need to figure out. Um, there is no total T4 and T3. I would imagine that these could be a little bit low, but we don't know for sure. Now, granted, if these were really severely low, it might make sense to provide some T4 to support the system. But keep in mind, under cell stress inflammatory mechanisms, we get an increased conversion of T4 to T3 at the hypothalamus in the pituitary, a drop in TSH, and adding more thyroid hormone to that picture probably doesn't make uh, sense. So no totals, we look at the free T4, it's 1.0. So at least we know there's enough free T4 available to get to the cells and tissues. The free T3 is 2.4. This is what a lot of people would say is functionally low. It's not lab low, but it's functionally low. And why is this important? Because and in, in a cell stress inflammatory mechanism, most of the T3, uh, you're, you're gonna get some decreased conversion of T4 to T3 in a lot of the cells and tissues. And so there is enough free T4 to convert to T3, but that's probably being downregulated. By what? By this inflammatory cell stress mechanism. How could we confirm that that's the case? Well, we can look at labs for inflammatory markers. There's none pr provided to review. And, but we also see the lower TSH production. So this is a situation where sure, the person may feel tired, they may feel fatigued, they may have some symptoms of hypothyroidism. Maybe we wanna help out and make the person feel better, but are we actually doing the right thing for the patient long-term? 
or are we actually contributing to the problem? In this situation, if there's an immune inflammatory process going on, this is the appropriate adaptive response. This isn't broken physiology. So what we need to address is what's driving the inflammatory process that's, supp that's suppressing TSH, what's driving the inflammatory process that's reducing the conversion of T4 to T3, and if we address those things, then we can get a patient an appropriate solution and not start them on a medication merry-go-round. Unfortunately, this person was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. With hypothyroidism, they were placed on armor and T3, and in a four-month follow-up, we get their labs back. Uh, the, and keep in mind, I didn't run these. these the, this is the history I was provided. Uh, at a four-month follow-up, TSH is 0 0.35. So now we've suppressed exactly what I just kind of said what was going to happen. If we give more thyroid hormone in a situation where there's inflammatory processes going on, that thyroid medication, T4 and T3, is going to saturate the hypothalamus and the pituitary. It's going to drop TSH even more. And now let's take a look at the labs. Free, no totals again. Free T4 was 1.2. Free T3 is 2.8. Somebody's thinking, hey, this is good. And may, the patient's still struggling with symptoms. They're looking at these labs and they said, hey, I think this looks better. Um, let's just give you more T3 because T4 is good. Let's just give you more T3 and that might fix this into uh, this free T3 into a more optimal range. And we hear that term a lot, especially in functional medicine, that we have to optimize the labs. If we're optimizing the lab value, does that, does that mean we've optimized tissue levels? Does that mean we've taken a cell stress response, inflammatory response, and restored this allostatic state to homeostatic state? And the answer is no, it doesn't. So in this situation, this looks better, I guess people would say it's 1.2 and 2.8. So is this really better? Well, keep in mind, the person was taking 38 micrograms of T4, 12 micrograms of T3. They took it in the hours before the blood draw. So what's gonna happen in four hours after taking this T3, that's gonna be a peak of T3 in circulation and it's at 2.8. That's not really a high level and we gave that person about a third of the amount of, of T3 that they would make in any given day at both between the gland and the peripheral conversion. So we, we've masked this value. This, we artificially made the labs look better, T4 and T3. And this person saw this. I did this calculation, so this is me. And this person said, hey, we improved the labs. I know your symptoms aren't better yet, but maybe what we just need to do is keep increasing that dose of armor and T3. And if we increase, keep increasing the dose, we'll find a number where these numbers are optimal and therefore you'll be optimal. And unfortunately, it hasn't worked in the last eight, nine, 10, 11, who knows how long. This is not, the, the person's been up and down in medication, up and down in symptoms, lots and lots of supplements. This is not a strategy for improving this, somebody's health. This is the problem in, in, that we find in thyroid physiology. We give allopathic medicine a hard time because they don't want to provide too early, but then in, in functional medicine or natural medicine model, we're often interfering way too early, assuming the body's broken, the body forgot how to convert T4 to T3, and a person who really understands Thyroid physiology wouldn't just run a limited panel. And two, they wouldn't be trying to just manipulate thyroid medication with T4 and T3 into a specific range without giving some thought to, is what's going on an appropriate response to some form of cell stress response? And if that's the case, artificially manipulating blood, range, blood values into a range with medication isn't optimizing them. Their body was already optimized because it was adapting to a stress inflammatory or cell stress or inflammatory response. That was the optimal response. Artificially increasing more thyroid medication into a system for potentially some symptomatic improvement, but actually creating more stress on the system is not what functional medicine is all about. So this is a person that will now start working on trying to re get them to a more appropriate level of thyroid hormone, but this is a, um, and get their health back to normal, 
But this is a person who started on that med that thyroid medication kind of roller coaster ride and never should have been put on it uh, initially based on this limited amount of labs. So my take, if you have any comments, you can put them below. All right, take care.